So in this video, we're going to find the kramer rayo lower bound of the geometric distribution. Now, how are we going to go about that? Well, first of all, we look at the geometric distribution. Now, this is a discrete distribution and it's got a probability mass function, which is f of x given p, where p is the probability x is our random variable. That is p times 1 minus p to the power of x minus 1. That's our geometric distribution. That's the first point that we need to make clear there. And because it's discrete, x can be equal to 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 all the way up to n number of variables. And p, because it's a probability, that's just between 0 and 1. So that's where we start off from with our geometric distribution. Now, what about the kramer rayo lower bound? Well, the kramer, the kramer rayo lower bound is all about the variance, and it's trying to reduce the variance of this parameter here, p. So the tighter this we are to the mean of this p, the better we can uh, estimate our distribution of this geometric distribution. So the way I'm going to do it with this uh, function here, because of the nature of this function, I'm going to use something called Fisher's information function. So the Fisher's information function, so here we're in terms of p, so I'm going to call this i of p. A lot of people will just go straight for i of theta, but as there's no theta in it, I thought it might be a bit confusing, I'm just going to write i of p. So our Fisher's information function for this distribution here is negative n times the estimation and then in there we have the second derivative with respect to p of the log of our function f of x given p. Now there is another way of finding our kramer rayo lower bound but for this function taking the second derivative of this I think it's going to be the easier way to go. So that's the way I'm going to go. I'm going to use this Fisher's information function. And my variance, so my variance of p, which is my parameter, that is going to be greater than or equal to 1 over our Fisher's information function. So that's our goal. That's the end goal that we want, is this bit here. So this variance of p, now we give the p an accent because it's not our, necessarily our p here, it's our, trying to find our mean of the p. So this here, that's the same as our kramer rayo lower bound. So that's our final goal for us to try and achieve at the end there. OK, so first of all, let's try and calculate the Fisher's information function. So i of p, that equals negative n. So n is just the number of variables that we have. And then expectation. And then we want the second derivative with respect to p of the log of our function, which is this function here. p times 1 minus p to the x minus 1. OK, so that's our setup to find our kramer rayo lower bound. That's the first stage of what we're trying to do. So let's go straight in and attack this function. Let's take the log of this bit here and then we'll take the derivative and so on after that. So now we've got negative n times the expectation of the second derivative, which we're going to come to soon. Then I'm going to open a bracket. I'm going to take the log of this function here. So working with logarithmic rules and identities, we can break this apart. When it's multiplied, we can just add the logarithms. So now we're going to have log of p, that takes care of this one. Remember this is log based e. So I could put an e there if I wish, but I'm going to leave them all just as log, so we know that it's natural logarithm. So log of p, that's our first term, and then we can add the log of this term involving p. Well, by the law of indices, we can bring the x minus 1 out front, and then log of 1 minus p. So put that in a bracket as well, so we keep it uh, technically correct. Okay, so that takes care of that, that's good. 
So now let's start taking derivatives of this function here. So that equals minus n times the expectation. Now because I'm going to do the derivative in two stages, I'm just going to leave the first derivative in here. So I leave that as that, and then take the derivative of this. So log of p, derivative of that is simply 1 over p, and then plus. Now, the der derivative of this, I've got x minus 1, which doesn't involve p, so that will stay on my numerator. And then log of 1 minus p, I'll put 1 minus p in my denominator, so I can put that in there. And then by the chain rule, I need another negative because the derivative of 1 minus p is negative 1. So I need to change this sign to a minus sign. OK, so that will take care of that. OK, now I've got a minus sign here and a minus sign here. I can bring that in there if I wish. But at the moment, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I could perhaps do that on the second derivative. OK. Let's go again on the derivative. So negative n, expectation. Now let's take the derivative of this. So 1 over p, that's the equivalent of p to the minus 1. So there'll be a minus sign in there. So minus 1, and then raise the power of this by 1. So that becomes p squared. So minus 1 becomes minus 2 effectively with p squared. Now let's take the derivative of this. I'm just going to leave my sign for the moment. So my x minus 1 will stay in the top. This one here, I'm going to raise to the power of 2. So this is effectively 1 minus p to the minus 1. So now I'm going to have 1 minus p to the minus 2, as it's in the denominator. And then by the chain rule, I'm going to need another negative sign. So I'm going to bring that out to the front there. But also, because this is multiplied by negative, I'm now going to leave that as a positive. So this minus sign is going to stay. OK. OK, now let's do something with this minus sign. So if I distribute this minus sign in here, it means basically multiply everything by minus 1, I'm going to end up with all positives. So let's take care of that. So then if I take that out, instead of rewriting it, I'm effectively putting out as a positive one and that as a positive one as well. This positive one here, I'm just going to take that out. It's not actually needed. So we just leave it just like that. OK, now all I need to do now is take the expectation of this term here. So now by the linearity of expectation, I can now take the expectation of each term. So I leave my big bracket in there and bring the expectation inside. That's 1 over p squared. Bear in mind everything is still multiplied by this n. That's why I need that bracket. So expectation of 1 over p squared plus the expectation of x minus 1 over 1 minus p squared. OK. Now, expectation of this, there's no random variable x involved in there at all. So this will just stay as it is. This is just effectively a constant. So the expectation of constant is still a constant. So let's just start again on a new line. So this I can just clear as 1 over p squared. This, my expectation, I can just take the expectation of x and then continue with the rest of my fraction. So that's plus the expectation of x minus 1 and then 1 minus p squared. OK, right. Let's clear the board, bring this up the top, and then we continue to clear this out and find our solution for our Kramer-Rayo lower bound. OK, right, let's simplify this off, first of all, and let's sort out this expectation of x term in here. Well, what are we going to do to plug something in for that in terms of p? Well, the geometric distribution, we know that the mean of that is 1 over p. And the mean, we know, is the, just the expectation of our x random variable. So we can plug in that a 1 over p. So let's do that. n times 1 over p squared plus 1 over p. Remember in mind that's still in our numerator. 
this bit will still stay in the denominator and then minus one. Okay, now we could bring this P down here, but it's still algebraically incorrect. If we just put this P down here and leave the minus one, we're actually making a mistake. We need to write this in terms of P. So this one, we know that one can equal P over P. So this one, we're going to rewrite that as P over P. Now what we can do is bring this P down to the bottom and leave one minus P in the numerator of the whole fraction. So let's just put that in. So one over P squared plus, now I've got one minus P, that's this bit. This P I can bring down the bottom and then I've got one minus P squared still there in the bottom there. Okay, now we're still, we're still, that is an answer, but we want to clean that up a little bit. We want to get a common denominator and then we'll get a bit clearer as to where we can put our Kramer rail lower bound. So we've got P, one minus P squared, or we can leave the one minus P squared as it is. We've got a P squared here, so I need to put that down in here and multiply everything there by P. So if that's P squared, I'm going to need a 1 minus P squared up top there. And then 1 minus P, to make that common, I'm going to have to multiply all those terms by P. So plus 1 minus P times P. I'm going to leave my P there. I could bring it out front, but it's still the same, same uh, representation. Okay, so now let's try and sort this out on the top. So now I've got n times, foil this out, I will have 1 minus 2p plus p squared. So that is that. And let's just distribute this p with these two terms. So now I'm going to have plus p minus p squared. And then divide all that by p squared, 1 minus p squared. Right, now let's just clean this one up. So plus p squared minus p squared, they're going to cancel, that's good. Minus 2p and plus p, that becomes minus p. So basically this all simplifies down to 1 minus p. So then that equals n times, now we can just shrink this up a lot more now. So now I've got 1 minus p over p squared, 1 minus p squared. That's my Fisher's information function here. So let's just write this up on the board here. So my Fisher's information function now, I'm going to, my 1 minus p and a 1 minus p squared, they will cancel out, leave me with a 1, and that will leave me with a power of 1. So it's going to leave me 1 over p squared, 1 minus p. Okay, so that's not our end goal. Our end goal is to find the kramer rayo lower bound. So let's make a bit of space here and then we can write our final answer up in the board. Okay, so our variance of P, which is the same as our kramer rayo lower bound, that is basically the reciprocal of this, which is P squared, one minus P, all divided by N. And this is my final answer.